Well, if you've been keeping up with me, I stated in my last video I bought an MSD box. And I'm going to show y'all how to wire this thing up to a small block Chevy. This is the MSD box. I went with the black. The red is the most common, but I don't like stuff to stand out. Although I got these bright butt uh, valve covers on the car, but uh, I didn't put those on there. The last guy who worked on it before I knew how to put those on there. So anyway, I went with the black. And as you can see, factory remanufactured. Remember I told you, I don't spend a lot of money on nothing, man. So this box is about a hundred, hundred and a half dollars cheaper than the, uh, the new one. So I went with this one. You get a warranty with it. It come with everything you need. So here we go. I got the uh, 6AL2 because it comes with a two-step rev limiter. You got the rev limit to where, you know, the top end rev limit where you want your car to redline, and then you have the uh, the lunch. It's like lunch control rev limiter, where you can set it to 2,000, 3,000, wherever you want to stall before you take off, before you blast up out of there. Um, so I went with this one. They have another one, the BTM. It does both of these and a retard timing for turbo, but that thing was $511. And what did I say? I don't pay a lot of money for nothing. I didn't feel like dishing out $500 just to be able to retard my timing. So uh, I didn't go with that one. I just went with this one. So let's get this party started. First thing I'm going to do, first thing I would do, is find out where you want to mount this bad boy. I put this uh, heater block off right here. So guess what? There's plenty of room right there. That's where I'm going to mount it. I'm going to mount it right there. But the pack comes they want you to put it on top of these uh rubber grommets right here to eliminate the vibration because they say uh you know vibration i guess they could wear out the internals but in order to put those on you have to drill a hole and put a nut behind it so i would have to take this back off i'm not about to do all that to get this thing back out uh, i have to take the fender off there Check out my other video about the heater core uh, delete and you know how to take this thing off. I don't want to go through all that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use some self-tappers. These right here are some self-tappers. I'm going to put some self-tappers on it. And uh, I'm going to just put it without the grommet for now. And the reason I say mount it first is because if you know where you're going to mount it, you know how long you need your wire. If you just lay it somewhere just to test it and make sure it's working and all that, that's fine too. But still, you need to know the length of the wires uh, to get them to reach where they need to go. So the first thing I'm going to do is mount it. And then I know how long I need my wires to be so they can get to where they got to get. So let me mount this thing and uh, I'll be right back. All right, I got this thing hung temporarily. Like I say. This is not how I'm going to do it on the uh, the finishing touches permanently, but my self-tappers was too short. So I was able to drill a hole in it, but it was too short to go through everything. So, you know, problem number one. So I put these in temporarily just to hold it in place while I wire it up and figure out how long, how short I need wires to be. So uh, that's problem number one. Problem number two is a problem. But it's not really a problem. MSD, come on, bruh. Come on, bruh. You got these, right? Everything written under here is right for it to be facing upward. 1,100 status. 1,100 rev limit. You, you see, that's right. But then they go ahead and put the sticker upside down. Come on, bruh. Come on, bruh. Come on, MSD. Come on, bruh. Anyway, it's a problem. But it's not a problem. So here we go. Got the thing mounted. Now I'm going to show you how to run the wire. Let's get to that. All right. First thing I'm going to do is come over here to this distributor. You're going to have to take the cap off. If you got enough room, your wires is loose. You don't have to take the wires off the distributor cap. But mine was already to the point to where I didn't have enough play if I left the wires on there. If you don't know your firing order... I uh, suggest you mark them. As you can see, that's been marked since day one. That's uh, number one. Set of number one. And mine tend to go uh, clockwise. I don't know. Um, 
Yeah. So this could be one, eight, four, three, six, five, seven, two, coming back around. So mine is already marked. I know my firing order, so it wasn't a big issue. So uh, if you got to take your wires off, take them off. If you don't, you don't. This right here is a screw to uh, get this cap off. Basically, you put a fillip in there, or if you got a, 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 a flathead, you just push down on it and twist, and these little legs will come out. So I already did it. Then you have some uh, wires over here you have to unplug. This goes all the way in the back. That goes to the uh, the uh, the thing that's in there. What you call that? The uh, I forgot the name of it. But anyway, that one went all the way in the back. As you can see, top of the distributor has right. You got a C minus ground B plus. Then you got tack and battery. This one went all the way in the back. Unplug it. Then you have can't see them because oh there they go. These wires under here is this one. If one more up under there somewhere, I don't know what what is that is. Yeah, that's it right there. So these two was also in there. Long story shit short, my, excuse my friends. Long story short, take them all out. I loosen the cap. Take the cap, put it somewhere. That's that leg I was talking about. Let me see if I can demonstrate. Put it on the ledge. But what you go do is you go push down. As you can see that leg goes, it's spring loaded. So you can push down and twist and uh, you see it spinning. And that's how you get the cap off for those who don't know. Now you go come in here and you have to remove this jabroni right here. That has to come out. As you can see, I already removed the screws, but it's two screws. There's one right there and one right there. Yeah, I got it. It's some uh, baby uh, bolts. These memo gems right here. The size of it is a, uh, let's see. It's, uh, it's a quarter. See, that's what I got it out with. There you go. I use a uh, socket. So you get those two screws out. And then over here, you got a Phillips screw in there. That's just ground. So you take that out, and this whole thingamajig will come out. I'm trying to do it with one hand, it ain't happening. All right, so before you take it out, like I said, I already did it, but it's two wires over here. They got uh, female connectors to them. Just pull them straight out, and it'll come out. And then the whole piece will come out. You don't need it no more. That's yonke. So now you're gonna be left with a distributor that look like this. This is the coil. You can leave that alone. Now I'm gonna show you how to put in what they want you to put in. So here we go. All right, this wiring harness is already in the kit. As you can see here, got these uh, male tips on the end and I know you're probably wondering well what wire go to what wire but if you look at the tip these uh, male ends one is bigger than the other so they can only go one way put the big one with a big one fit put the little one with a little one fit and then you run the wire through there's a grommet you have to put on the end of this so uh let me get that grommet and show you all right here we go this is the grommet the grommet, of course, you start from the back, slip it over one wire, then you slip the other wire over, push it through. Now I'm gonna show you how you put it on the distributor. All right, so with that grommet, you just slip it over the existing gap where the old one came from. So you just push it on there, then the wire come through. And like I say, the tip of these, a go and uh, camera kind of dark but if you can see those wires right there they're going there that's the big one and it look like the little the little one is on the inside so let me wire these in all right there you go I'm trying to get closer so you can see but all I did was like I said the big one went to the big one and the little one went to the little one 
go just like that. Just push them in. That's not rubber. It don't have no rubber on it. Uh, to me, it seems a little shady, but the original one didn't have no rubber on it either. But, you know, you got a hot wire. If it touched metal, it usually will start arcing. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to wrap a little tape around mine just in case. It doesn't say to, so maybe this work a little different than what I think, but I don't know. Just to be on the safe side, I'm going to put some tape on mine. And then what you do, you know, pull the slack out of the wire, which is I'm trying to do with one hand. It ain't working. But you want to pull the slack out. I'm going to have to end up taking this up anyway because I'm going to tape it, but I just want to show y'all real quick. You want to pull the slack out, but not too tight because that's too tight to the inside. The inside is spin. But they give you these little hold downs to put on the wire and then you screw them back into here. So let me do that real quick after I tape it and I'll show you how it go. All right, you have these uh, little black holder wire holder as you can see already have one of them in there that's to hold the wire from moving around because like i say this coil you're going to be spinning and you don't want it to catch this wire it's going to rip some stuff up and uh that's all that so uh let me get the other one on there i got one in there all i did was use the um the original boat that was holding down the uh the pickup that's what that is it's the pickup i believe the uh magnetic Whatever, man. But anyway, uh, I used to exist the screw. I thought it was going to be too long because it's pretty long. Because this pickup is pretty thick. But so far, I went back in there. So um, I got that one in. Let me get this one in so we can proceed. Make sure you, you didn't go in there with the car. You got stuck in there. Oh, no. I'm, I'm, I'm over here. It's my beautiful wife. Oh. Um, she come out and make sure I didn't get trapped underneath the car, which is good. She come out here from time to time. Make sure she don't have to squat this car off of me. So, uh, but yeah, I got these bolted in, as you can see, the two black ones, they under there. Then you continue to run the wire, put it on the grommet, set the grommet on the edge, and you all done from under here. So let's proceed to the next step. Now, I recommend you take a picture of the cap underneath right here before you put it back on. Cause you're gonna need to put some wires in these individually they come with a female connector and you're gonna have to um slide them on there individually and if you don't know which way these pins are facing it'll be hard to know how to put them on there without looking because the cap will be on like this you can't see so you need to know which way these pins are facing so you can you know get them female uh clips on there so if i was you now would be a good time to take a picture of this cap just like this before you put it back on. Also, if you don't remember how this cap came off, it go on. You will know when it go on because it, it'll fall into place. And uh, it only go on one way where it fall into place. This little notch right here, it's like a square. It goes in the back. See that square back there? It'll fall in. So if you don't remember how it was facing, just spin it. Was falling. All right, I got the uh, distributor cap back on. Just remember, push down the twist to that little hook goes underneath the distributor lip. Go around, do all of them, and that's it for the distributor. Well, for the inside of the distributor, you still have other things you need to hook to here. So uh, let's proceed to the next step. All right, you got this uh, upside down sticker MSD box over here. What I'm gonna do? I'm gonna separate my wires. And uh, I'm going to break it down to you. Black. Ground. This ground, they say you need to go to the battery. But ground is ground. Whether it's battery ground, engine ground, chassis ground. Ground is ground. Just make sure it's a good ground. I found a ground up here on the firewall. I'm going to have to. I'm probably going to clean it. Well, I need to clean it a little bit. Get some of this dirt off. Get some of this 40-year dirt off of it. And uh, this ground, more than likely, it's going to go up there. I wanted to put it to the engine block, but it's not long enough. The only reason I'm not extending it, because they say if you cut it and need to extend it, you need to use one gauge bigger than what's on here. And I ain't got time for that. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody so got time for that. Either I ground it over there, uh, 
You know, you, you got all kind of bolts on these cars that's bolted into metal. That's bolted into metal right there. It's close. I can ground it right there. Like I say, ground is ground. Just make sure it's a good ground. That's not a good ground because it's on, this is paper. So you need metal to metal ground and clean metal to metal. That over there underneath is clean. It's just dirt around it from over the years. That's the belief. But that's the original ground from the uh, factory. So I'm, I'm, I'm sure that's a good ground because why would they use it? As you can see, it's another one under here, but it's full of dirt. That's just 40 year old dust and dirt being blowed on it. But that's another ground the factory used. So I'm going to just ground it somewhere along this area because I don't want to cut it and extend it. So you got black, put it to ground. Now you got a thick red wire. A thick red wire, it already has a fitting on the end. This goes to your battery. There's some people who have the uh, um, MSD boxes inside the car and they don't want to run this wire all the way to the battery. You just got to run it to a power source that uh, is 12 volts. Make sure it's 12 volts all the time. And um, just run it to that. I actually have one on the car. I got a couple 12 volts. For instance, those two uh bolts over there 12 volt so if i didn't want to run it all the way to the battery i can hook it on that um this wire right here 12 volts tested it because i thought i had an alternator problem but i didn't this wire right here 12 volts when the car is running jumps up to 14 because of you know the alternator work so i can do that but since the wire is long enough i'm gonna just go ahead and put it to my battery like they say so got those two out of the way remember short black one ground this red one goes to the battery. Now, you have a long black one that's coated with it, with uh, with this rubber tube. It has the orange wire and the black wire. These two is going to the distributor. So, let's get them to where they gotta go. Go put that over there. Like I say, these two are going to the distributor. And we got another red wire, this one, this bad boy right here. That's also going to the distributor. I'll let you know exactly where to the distributor when I get to it. But this bad boy going to the distributor also. Oh, get that out the way. So, so far we got, uh, what, three wires that need to go to the distributor. Nails. Nails, we got a gray wire. This gray one right here, that gray, a little white on the camera, but it's actually gray. Did I grab the red one? Am I colorblind? No, nah, it's gray. This gray wire is number four, going to the distributor. That's the tack wire. So you got the tack wire, that's number four, going to the distributor. And the only ones left, here we go. We got three wires left. You got a blue one. A white one and a white blue. The white one and the white blue, don't worry about them. You don't use them, according to what I learned. So uh, we go find out, though. Those two you do not use. The white one, for sure, I know I don't use. I think that one's for uh, if you have a, a points distributor or something like that. So I know I don't need that one. But this blue one, this is because of the, uh, the two-step. This blue wire needs to go to a switch to, acti to activate your two-step. Whether it's a switch that's a, a momentary switch. I would, I would prefer a momentary switch. A momentary switch means it's only activated while you're holding the button. Once you release your finger from the button, it shuts it off. And that's how you want it. You hold the button, two-step. And when you let go of the button, you blast up out of there. To the moon we go. So I would use a momentary or if you wanted to use uh, like a toggle switch or something, that's on you. But you better remember when it's time to get up out of Dodge, you got to turn that switch back off or you just go still sit there duh, 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 wondering what's going on. So I would use a momentary switch. Momentary switch or button, it's like what you would use to uh, for, for a starter or a horn. Something like that. It only works while you're pushing it. So this blue wire goes to a switch. 
and that's it folks so just to run it back to oh this puppy right here is a short one my bad y'all this one right here it already has a harness that was in the box this harness just the harness that's in the box remember them colors right there those are the same colors that we put inside that distributor cap so this harness right here you plug it into the connector that's already on the msd box and then the other end remember that wire that's coming out of the distributor there it is right there you plug it into that and that's it so that's that's easy peasy right there so like i say let's reiterate this black wire right here goes into the harness that's included with the kit. This thick red wire goes to the battery. The short black wire is ground. It either goes to the battery or a good ground source. The red wire is uh, 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 positive. So, you know, just to let you know it's positive. The thin red wire goes back to the distributor. The gray wire goes to the tag. These two wires goes to the distributor. And remember the blue one goes to uh, um, to a switch for the two-step. So uh, let's get this stuff wired up. Here we go. All right, here we go. As you can see, this the the long wire with the coating on it. On the inside, you can see it's a black wire and the uh, orange wire. Now that goes to this distributor cap. Remember I told you, you gotta plug them up under there and you gotta do it without looking unless you pull this distributor cap back off and uh, plug it in that way. So if it's, if you if you did it like me and pulled your wires and all that off, then to uh, take this distributor cap off, it'll take you, what, 10 seconds? So if you can't get those in there without looking, then just take the cap off and put them in. Now if you look at the top of the cap, you have written on this part right here. Mine is a little dirty, but you have a C minus, GRD for ground, and a B plus. Now, these two wires right here, the black one, which is on my left hand side. Come on, camera. There we go. The black one is on the left. That black one goes to that C minus, according to the According to this here paper, if you look right here, the MSD, you got the black wire come off the box, going all the way over to the distributor, and it's going straight up. And where it goes straight up, that's where the C minus is. So it even got dotted lines pointing to that C minus. Now you got the orange wire, which is here. It's going down and around, go up. And it's going all the way to the right hand side closest to the firewall and that's going to the b plus over there that b plus so there you go black to c minus orange to b plus so that's what i'm gonna do so uh let me get that in there and i'll be right back all right here we go i took my cap back off like i said the way i had mine it don't take long to get it back off but i wanted to show you in, in, in better detail how we do this so remember the top, the top part, we got tack, battery in the front, then C minus, ground, B plus in the back. So remember that black wire went to the C minus. And if you flip it over, that's way in the back. There we go. All right, so what I did also, this black rubber, it's pretty tight. It don't give you too much room to play. So I just took a little. Uh, sorry about that. I just took an exacto knife and uh, put a little slit in it. So I have some room to play. And as you can see, and all the way in the back. Er, come on, focus camera. There we go. All the way in the back is three pr uh, prongs. They're male prongs. So you gotta put these in the, the, the correct one. So the black one, that's right there. That's the black wire that's going to that uh, C minus. The middle one was the uh, GND for ground. And then the B plus is on that uh, 
right hand side closest to the firewall. So I'm gonna put the orange one. I'm all out of breath because I'm laying on the car with my stomach and I can't breathe. I can't breathe. So the orange one is uh to the right. And go put that on that that uh B I believe it was uh B plus. So let me get that on there. I can't do it with one hand. Alright, so I got the black one to the the C minus. If you flip it over, C minus is in the back. I got the black one to the C minus and the orange one to the B plus. Now you should have the one in the middle, which is ground, open. Now I'm gonna show you what's that for. The one in the middle, if you look at the instructions, that ground in the middle, it comes with a white uh, a ground wire. It's right here. That one is gonna go up in the middle for ground. And that wire is supplied in the kit. It's gotta go in the little bag and it actually come with the ground. So, like I said, you put this through a boat and put it to ground. Metal to metal, good ground. Not a painted surface or anything like that. If it has rust, try to clean it. You want a nice clean surface. So put that boat, that end to ground. And then this female end right here, you go push it up in there to the middle one. And that's where the GND is, right in the back. Uh, there we go. Let's go go right in the middle right up in let's see if i there we go let's go going to in, be, in between these uh these two right here let's go go right in it right there you go let's go, go right up in there so let me get that in there and uh, put this cap back on all right so there you have it i got all three black wire to the c minus g and d got a ground wire of itself that's right here. That goes to ground. And then the orange wire go to that B plus. So I have that right, I have that connected. And uh now the uh gray wire goes to the tack. But I'm gonna do that one later. Um I need to put a you know what, might as well do it now. I need to put a for some reason my gray wire. Um uh, all the wires was already had these ends on it they was already on there the the female tips but the gray wire it didn't have one so i gotta put a female on it so i can plug it into where it says tack which is to the left so that's where you want to uh put that and then the battery one if i'm mistaken that one stays open because you're not gonna plug battery wire back into it I'll show you what you have to do for that but the battery one it's gonna stay open yeah that's correct let's you see um, that battery one over here to the right it stays open so uh, do I even show you this diagram don't show you oh yeah gray wire tack output so right here is telling you the gray wire is the tack output. And uh but it don't have you know where it go down and come around here and tell you where to plug it. But you know that's pretty obvious. You put it where the tack go. And um that red wire over there, that's what goes to your existing uh key connection that usually go up into the um the distributor cap that's a BAT. That's usually where that plug into. But as you can see. They got a jumper harness that we go use to uh to get that uh to get that going so uh that's cool let's put this uh cap back on well you know what i'm gonna go ahead and wire up the, the tack before i put the cap on might as well while it's off and uh i'll be right back i just wanted to show you what i did the gray wire actually shortened because it didn't have a a, a female tip on the end all the other ones did they're actually too long but i didn't want to cut off that uh female tip to shorten the wire so i'm gonna have to wrap those up and uh you know make it look a little decent but since this one didn't have a tip on it and i didn't care i just shortened it and uh twisted the tip and all i gotta do now is put this female end on it and push it back up into the distributor cap and uh you know we'd be done we can put the distributor cap back on all right that's the finishing touch right there Put the wire in there, crimped it. I have some old crimp pliers that 
been around about 10 years the mo just put that on there and uh take that gray wire right now it's too short to come all the way over here but like i say go go to the to the prong to the far left the one i'm touching right there go go right there that's the tack one so i'm gonna put it in there put this distributor cap back on and we done with the cap we done with the distributor in general that's it for the distributor besides <clears throat> putting that one wire to ground but uh that'll be it so let me put that wire on there put this cap back on all right i had said that was it for the distributor but i lied it's got one more wire to hook up um and that one wire here we go remember that red wire that was up there i told y'all about that come over here also we got one more wire the red one the thin red one goes to the distributor and what you go do with that is it come with a harness but for some strange reason well i ain't gonna call it strange because i ain't the only this ain't the only uh car on the planet that this box goes for this is a universal box so this harness has two wires with uh two metal tips on it it goes into uh this wire right here this is the factory harness wire mine is it looked like once upon a time it looked brown but it might have been pink because the des description say uh either pink or red it don't look like it was red unless it faded miserably but uh maybe it was pink it looked brown now but whatever long story short it goes back to your harness and as you can see it's only a one uh one connector it got one prong in there but yet the harness with the with the male tip it's a two prong it's two wires butted into one connector so what i did because that's that's gonna be hot that's gonna have juice going through it go have that fire so uh i taped off this end so it don't touch no metal or nothing like that so what you gonna do once again the wire is actually too long but i don't want to cut it to shorten it because i got this beautiful connector at the end so this female is gonna go let me put this stuff down so i can show you all right here we go you got this harness it comes in the pack and um this is a uh, a male end right here if you can see on the inside camera focus there you go you got a male right there this male is gonna plug into this female let me do that right now all right there you go it's gonna go in just like that male to female if you want tape it off you got a little exposure in the back not much but you don't want that to touch metal so i'll probably put some tape on it and then this end right here remember that one connector wire this is from the factory harness on the vehicle. That's a uh, female. This is a male. So this tip is going to go down in there. Uh, here we go. I dropped it. So this tip right here is going to go down into the female. And that's where you get the, the key signal from. When you turn the key on, it's going to... Uh, send a signal to the msd to turn on so that's where you get that from so that's gonna go down in there and that's it for sure for the distributor i promise that's it so uh let me push that down in there further put a little tape on both ends and that's it for the distributor besides putting your wires back on if you took them off but that's it all right change the plans the uh ground from the msd box that i was gonna run right here i'm not gonna run it right there no more uh look a little shady man because this was a, a self tapper that was in that hole and i figured if it was a a uh factory ground it should have been threaded but i don't know maybe that's how they did things back in the day plus it's a, a washer right here it's, it's open i was gonna say it's solid but i just popped it off so it wasn't as solid as i thought it was i don't think that's a factory ground I think somebody just put that there, so I don't know if I want to use that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put it over here. This, I believe, is where my uh, my hinges used to go. My factory hinges for the stock hood. As you can see, I cleaned it. Uh, I, I just used some sandpaper, sanded it down to get whatever dirt and paint might have been on there. I got it off. What I'm going to do, I'm going to put that uh, 
that ground wire from the MSD. I'm gonna put I'm gonna ground it right here. And uh I believe that'll be a better ground to than that one. Cause that one I can't even put the bolt too tight because it's a self-tapper. And if you look in there, that's pretty thin. It's been stripped out. So this right here is threaded. So I'd rather ground it right there. I can, you know, put a little torque on it, make sure it's tight and getting grounded good. So just wanted to let y'all know this is what I'm gonna ground mine. But like I say, just find any metal to metal surface that's clean and uh, you can ground it there if it was long enough probably can't see because it's dark but it's a bolt that holds the transmission to the block right in the back right there that's easy to get to i could have took that bolt off and grounded it there but this wire ain't long enough so i'm gonna just put it right here so just wanted to let y'all know for a heads up all right here we go continuing on on the box side Told you I put the ground over here. And then you got the thick red wire that goes to the battery on the positive side. So I'm gonna put that on the positive side. And then all we have to do is connect this member jammer right here with the supplied harness to the distributor. So let's hook up that right now, the, uh, the harness to the distributor. Give me one second, cause I can't do it with one hand. All right, I got one end on the harness over here. The other end is going back into over here. So that's all done. Get that out of the way. And now I'm gonna hook up the uh, the power wire to the battery. And the way it look now, that's not how I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna clean it up a little bit and. Uh, Get these wires, um, you know, a little tucked in. Put a little wire loom on them. Get a little nicer than how it's looking now. The thing is, a lot of these wires are too long, which is okay. Like I said, it's a universal kit. So they want to give you enough length to put it wherever you choose to put it. So they give you long wires, which is, I like that. So I uh, just got to clean it up a little bit and uh, make it look a little presentable. But for now, let's hook this uh power wire up just to show you it's kind of self-explanatory you got a bolt that goes into the battery the power wire already have a, a, a connector on the end just slide it over the bolt put the bolt back this wire down here is not for the msd box for my headlight so ignore that put the bolt back in and now take it from there all right so i got it hooked up to my power and if I'm not mistaken, that should be it. This thing should be ready to fire up. So let's go over it. Thick red wire, battery. Ground wire, connect it over there. Thin red wire, already hooked it up to the distributor. That's it on the top over there. Uh, white wire, not used. White blue, not used. This is the harness that has the, the black and orange wire. It's already going to the distributor. Uh, blue wire, I can't hook it up because I don't have a, a momentary switch yet. So we're going to get that one out of the way. So go get that out of the way over there. And then, mm, that's it. This hooked up. These two not used. That's going to the battery. That's already hooked up. Ground already hooked up. Oh, gray wire already hooked up. That's it, folks. All I got to do, put my spark plug wires back and uh, see if this thing fire up. So uh, let me put my spark plug wires back and we'll see if this thing got some fire. All right, so I, I just want to let everybody know. I didn't say this about three times, but... Uh, I put that ground right here. If you read the instructions in the manual, it says put it directly to battery. Um, I looked online, some people were saying, you, you know, that's that's what it says in the in the manual just to uh, eliminate any kind of problems with it not getting good ground or a good power. To eliminate that, you put it directly to the battery. So if you're a company and you're trying to uh, eliminate any kind of recalls 
or not recog, but any kind of uh, defects because of people hooking it up wrong, you state put it directly to the battery. So um, some people were saying if you put it to the frame or a good ground, you know, engine ground, trans ground, frame, whatever, just metal to metal has to be a good clean ground, you'd be all right. So that's where I put mine. But I just want to tell you, the instructions does say put it directly to the battery. So I don't want to be reliable anybody putting it uh, any place other than the battery. And you have some kind of malfunction. So uh, I put mine there. And uh, that's what I'm going to leave it for now. So if you choose to put yours there, that's on you. I'm not uh, reliable for it. So if you want to do it how the manual will say, put it to the battery. And um, another thing I wanted to show y'all before I end this video, because that's how you hook it up. That's the only steps, only thing left for me to do is clean up the wiring. And uh, I don't need to show you how to clean up the wiring because uh, how I clean up the wiring for this car might not relate to how you go do it to your car. So that part you can figure out on your own. But I said earlier that... Um, in order to put these, because you got to put a, a, a nut on the back, I would have to take off that block off plate. So what I did, I seen that these are, uh, they're two pieces. The top part is threaded. The bottom part has the stud on it. But that metal doesn't go all the way through. So the, the center is actually rubber. So what I did, got some snips, cut them in half. So now what I'm going to do, this one I actually cut too short to where the metal is hanging out. And you can hear like, that's metal to metal, that's not good. That's what you don't run. So cut it close to uh, this back part right here. I use some metal snips and just cut it close. And what I'm gonna do is, that's, that's rubber, that one's good. Well, that's the wrong part. But uh, this one's good, it's just rubber. Got another one here, it's rubber. Got another one here. That one I cut too short, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna run this through the MSD box and then I'm gonna put it through here. And uh, the MSD box is gonna sit on top of this rubber. And I got self tappers. I'm just going all the way through with the self tapper. The ones I had earlier was too short. My wife went to the store for me. She's such an amazing person. Sure. Yep. And uh, these are an inch and a quarter. So, um, it should work inch and a quarter which you go all the way through so that's how i'm gonna do for mine in case you want to use these rubbers but you know it don't work out for you the way it's set up just cut the the back part off get you some self tappers go all the way through it'll go through these threads it's threaded right here but you're not going to use these threads you know so it'll go all the way through self tappers and then this will thread into your firewall once you get all the way through it. And uh, with four of them, you'll be all right. So that box ain't heavy anyway. So it'll hold. Just keep an eye on it just to make sure it's not backing out or anything like that. And you'll be good. So uh, I got everything wired up. Let's just see if this thing will fire up. Um, I got all the garage doors down. So I don't want to leave it on too much. Let's see. Just that fire up. Yep. Alright, so it fired up. We know it worked because we got spark. So that's gonna conclude this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I tried to get step by step at the detail as I could so you can get a better understanding on how to hook these boxes up because they're not hard at all. It's just, you know, you just need a, a video. Because sometimes when you read the actual instructions, it, it seems a little hard. Like myself, I just need somebody to show me. And I figure making this video will show you guys. So, uh, hope you like this video. Like, subscribe, clean this up. And I'll catch y'all on my next uh, whatever I do to this thing. So, uh, take care. Like, subscribe. God bless.